our purpose forms our promises. How many of you have already heard that we are making, we made revisions to the student code of conduct? Clap for me if you heard it. Yes, the word is out there. We're, we're, we made revisions. Thank you again to the teams that worked on this. Why is this important? Because it's important that we have alignment, consistency, and equity in the work that we're doing, and this includes discipline. Making sure that we are reducing disparities across our schools based on a code of conduct so that all of us understand what is expected of our students and our students understand what is expected of them. Making sure that we're proactive as we think about attendance. I will tell you, last year it was hard for me not being able to talk as much about attendance as I know attendance is important. You know why it was so hard? Why was it hard for me last year to talk about attendance? Why was it hard? Because we had buses that weren't able to pick students up on time. So I don't, or, or get them to school period. And the drivers were doing their best. They were going back, picking up other routes, but there were students that just did not get to school because the buses did not get there for them. So this year, as we work through that challenge, uh, right now, as of today, I wish I could knock on wood. We have the drivers that we need to start us on day one. That deserves a round of applause. So that as we work through that process, we're also able to really begin to look at what is happening in attendance and how we're making sure that our students are in school every day and they're getting the support and the services that they need. Additional attention around restorative practices. We are, we are launching, we have launched restorative practices training across the district and that is huge. So let's give ourselves restorative practices training across the district. Listen. One of the things that we had to clarify for people as we think about restorative practices, our code of conduct has had restorative practices in it for a period of time. Our district has focused on restoration. It was a part of the code. Our district is one of the leading districts in Ohio that has an anti-racism policy and an equity policy. And they created those policies as a board before it was a thing that was happening across the country. That's just to be honest. And a bit of an outlier when it comes to that in Ohio. So those things have always been a part, or, or I think it dates back to 2012 maybe. Those things have been a part of our district for a period of time. Now we want to make sure we bring those things to life, that we're able to see them in the work that we're doing every day in our classrooms. One of the things that we had to clarify is when people hear restorative practices, they get very nervous because they think restorative practices means there's not discipline. And that's not what it means at all. If you make a mistake, would you rather learn from that mistake or would you prefer to be disciplined for that mistake? You want to learn from it. Now, that does not mean that there are not consequences. There doesn't, that doesn't mean that, that there are not things that go along with a consequence, but it is better to learn from that mistake so hopefully you don't repeat that mistake even if there is a consequence that has to be served. Our students deserve the same. They deserve to learn from their mistakes. They deserve to learn. Even in the most egregious of situations, they deserve to learn from their mistakes, even if they are receiving discipline. So it is not that it is restorative practices and it's devoid discipline. No, what is the partnership between the two? Because you also want to make certain that if a poor choice is made and there is discipline that goes with it, you also want to make sure that it's not repeated, and you do that by learning occurring. So that's the reason that we are taking a firm stance in restoration and a firm stance in the expectations around discipline. We have, we have asked schools to focus on four areas, and it's on one of the slides at some point. We've asked schools to focus on four areas this year. They'll do more work with their IOTs and determine what else needs to happen at their school buildings, but as a district, four areas, four simple areas when it comes to discipline. Entering the building, exiting or egressing the building, moving in the hallways, and, trans and cafeteria. Entering the building, exiting the building, moving in the hallways, and the cafeteria. Now, if you've ever been school-based, wave at me. Most people in this room have been school-based at some point. Those four areas are important. Why? Because there's a whole lot of kids out there. Right? And there are more than them moving about than there are of us. So in order to make sure that it's ordered, it's, 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 it's structured, 
there have to be expectations and the expectations have to be taught to the students. They do not just know it by osmosis. They do not. They do not. And listen, if you teach it to them, they will do what you ask them to do. 80% of the kids, I believe in the 80-15-5 principle, principles, APs, anyone that's worked with me in terms of professional development, you've heard me say this often. It is an actual principle. It's called the 80-15-5 principle. It works in almost anything. But this one, we're talking about students. 80% of the students are going to do what you ask them to do because you're the adult and they are not. 5% of the students have some greater challenges and they need an executive level of support. The difference is the 15% in the middle. With good structure, with good systems, with good communication, the 15% goes with the 80% to get 95% rowing in the right direction. If those things are broken in the middle and kids have to guess what they're expected to do, they have to guess where they're expected to go when they come to school, they have to guess what they're going to do when it comes to hall passes, that 15% goes with the 5% to get 20% going in the opposite direction, which makes your life hellacious. It is, it is a fact. Uh, and I accept the challenge if someone has a better example for me. Because when we think about it, we know that that's actual. So what do we do to start with? We show our children that there is a reset. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new start. We show them that there is a reset by showing them what we expect. Now, some schools have been doing this for a long time, and that is wonderful. But we are going to the team approach to the work that we do. We're not saying how you do it. Do what works best for your school. Whatever works for you. What this may look like in Withrow might be very different than it looks in Rockdale. Do what you need to do in your schools, but know that as a district, that's where we focus because it gives us an overall district expectation. And then our last, of course, on this list is our PBIS and continuing to expand PBIS for implementation. Our ultimate vision for restorative practices is not only do we train all of the individuals that interface with children that are our employees, but that we do the same work for those that are contracted services that support our students. One of the visions, I believe this to be so true. Our students have lost, many of them have lost the opportunity to reason. They have lost the opportunity to talk things out, to agree to disagree. And so before you know it, something very, very small, and sometimes they don't even understand what that thing is, takes them from, in the words of the kids, from zero to 100 real quick. Restorative practice is about teaching children how to restore. It's teaching them how to recover. It's teaching them how to take a step back and try to think. What is the antecedent to your behavior? What happened before you made this choice? After you did that, this was the consequence. How did that make you feel? Did you really intend to do that? Is that what you want to happen? And that takes teaching. But guess what happens? I am a believer that if our children are taught that with us, the people that they trust the most, they will take that into the, into the community with them and they will become better citizens on the streets of Cincinnati or wherever else they go because they've learned that with us. They've learned that. They know us. They trust us. They know that we believe in them. And it can happen. And guess what? It will happen right here with Cincinnati Public Schools. Will we be the model for the nation? Who really cares whether or not we'll be the model for the nation as long as our children are getting what they need and they're not killing one another on our streets? That's what makes the difference. That's what makes the difference. So it's bigger than us. This is bigger than Irenetta Wright. It's not about Irenetta at all. This is about giving our kids skills so that when they leave us, that they're able to exercise them while they have the guarded eye of our presence. They're able to exercise those things. They're able to make mistakes with people that they know, love, and care for them, even if we have to give them consequences. But we're going to love them through their challenge. We're going to work with their families. We'll continue to do that. But it's important that we share that and that we continue to move forward. You know, one of the things that our union, our CFT president asked me to do as we were talking about this and where we were going with restoration the code of conduct, she said, you know, Arenetta, I would like for you to do a video that plays to everybody, all the kids at the beginning of the school year, because I would love for them to hear from you. 
And I thought, well, that's a pretty easy ask because I believe in this work. And guess what? I know our kids can do it. I know that they can do it. I know that they can show us something different once we teach them what we expect. We hold them accountable for it, but even with accountability comes learning. It comes support and it comes training. So that is something that we'll look at doing. Let's go to the next.